Hi, I'm Keith McCullough. Welcome back to our studio here in Stamford, Connecticut. I'm here with Howard Penny, a senior partner at the firm, and he also runs our restaurant research business. We're going to talk about Darden restaurants today and what's going on from an activist perspective. So first, I want to get into this in terms of the management, Howard. So the, the problem from a management perspective is what? Sales, operating, both, clearance? Uh, it's definitely both. So we've seen a massive- Clearance or both? Both. <laughs> clearance, sales, margins. You put it all together and you've got a company that has really been massively underperforming for the last year, uh, maybe the last three years. And one of the biggest issues the company faces is they're spending too much money building restaurants in the casual dining industry. So they have a lot of restaurants. They have, what, eight brands? Eight brands and over a thousand restaurants. So Clarence thinks that he can make it work with eight brands, to be clear. Correct. And that's not working? It's not working. So, so what does he do from here? I think one of the biggest myths about Darden is that those eight brands actually perform or have synergies between the two or three or four. And what happens is there's actually a lot of you know, underperforming brands and a lot of excess costs, if you will, mm -hmm. that have created margin pressure for the company as sales have begun to erode. So is it, is, and then internally from a management perspective, does the, does the whole team buy into what he's trying to accomplish? Are people frustrated? Because now you see this, the streets frustrated. I mean, this stock has been hammered. They've missed numbers multiple times. And now you finally get an activist to say, Enough is enough, Clarence, with this. Yeah, so the, the streets definitely had enough with it, and with the stock and with the performance of Clarence. And with Barrington Capital now you know, pushing their buttons a little bit, I think you're going to begin to see more of that. Hmm. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So what could, um, I think sales to people are, are you know, in general, people say, hey, you can, if you fix sales, you fix the company. But what can a good operator do here that Clarence is not doing or not leading uh, his people towards doing? Well, if, if you think of Darden Restaurant's crown jewel of the Olive Garden, and that's really been underperforming from a traffic standpoint, meaning there are less customers coming in yeah. over the last four years. But it's not that people don't want to eat Italian food. People love Italian food. They just don't want to eat the Olive Garden's Italian food. <laughs> and, and that Never ending pasta bowl, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at me. I need that. I need that. Yeah, I mean, the, it, if people eat Italian food. They just need to eat better Italian food or, you know, a food that's a little more appealing to the average American. Mm -hmm. So do they, like in terms of how they've actually operated the Olive Garden specifically, do they have a G&A problem? Do they have, what's going on well, so, there underneath so the hood? The company has a G&A problem. So it, it, G&A as a percent of sales is probably 250 basis points higher than its competitors wow. or local or other, not local, but other companies that are comparable. And that alone, if you bring G&A down to an equal percentage rate, could cut $150 million out of the cost structure. Of the so, so basically, a mature company like Darden, one of the most mature companies in the S&P 500, should have G&A under control at this point. Correct. But instead, he's trying to, well, he's basically spending his brains out trying to do eight different brands at the same time, and it's just not working. Uh, yes, to, in a big, big way. So, so what is like? What would be his pushback from here if Barrington is if Barrington comes in and says, "Look, enough's enough, man. You got to you got to either change what you're doing, or you just are incompetent in terms of delivering from here. We're going to replace you." So, I, I don't know what Barrington has told them. I know what I think should happen, and I think they should they should sell off basically everything other than the core brands, Red Lobster and Olive Garden. And, and focus on the core business and get back to what this company has done right for a number of years, the 18 years that it's been a publicly traded company, and that's focus on two brands, maybe Red Lobster and Olive Garden, and just get rid of everything else. Wow. So t if you had, t if you only, if, if Dar the new Darden was two brands, what do you think the company could be worth? Uh, it's probably worth, remember, they, they've got, in my, my estimate, they've got about $3 billion of real estate. The equity value today, not the enterprise wow. value, but the equity value today is $6 billion. So half the equity value today is, you know, call it $3 billion in real estate. And, and if you put it all down on a piece of paper, you could buy the company today where you're paying two times cash flow for the Olive Garden. So if you sell off everything else, focus on the real estate and the Olive Garden, you've really got a, a cheap stock. It should be 50% higher than where it is trading today. Wow. So that, that's basically the point. I mean, the, Wall Street doesn't believe that Clarence can get a market multiple for his current asset base. So he needs to change it. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, look, Clarence, if you're listening, I know you're listening to us. I have a lot of friends at Darden, and I know you love us. And I know you love Howard, so I want you to... Uh, Kind of, kind of dig in and, and think about that a little bit in terms of what maybe an activist might be asking of you or uh, asking that of somebody else because that, of course, 
is the opportunity with every equity, which is some kind of a game changer, and a change at the top may very well be it. And that's, uh, that's the opportunity here if we think about this from a stock market perspective. As Howard pointed out, the stock's really around 48, 49. It's had a good run lately on rumors that somebody was going to file on it. Evidently, that's no longer new news. Uh, so again, from here, the opportunity is potentially 60, 70, 80% upside from here if you actually get that change agent. And it won't just be Barrington would be our submission. Howard will be talking to plenty of clients about his ideas on what a better Darden looks like. So that's that. If you have any questions, I'm Keith McCullough. At Keith McCullough would be my Twitter handle. Again, Clarence, you can, you can ping me on that if you'd like. Or you can go to Howard, and I know that you're more likely to call him. Uh, and, and Howard's handle at Hedgeye. HWP is where you can reach him. Any compliments, criticisms, or concerns, we'd be happy to hear from you.